again my name is Augusta Good. thank you for stopping by to watch this video actually this is a very quick video I decided to bring this to the notice of um, mostly the people the Biafran people and those who are a bit interested in that issue I saw this video around lying around and I decided to bring it up to you guys to see you know some people don't understand how this whole thing go so as we see something like this we get to spread them make others see them as I they watch for this video and they see the pains inside of her the way she they talk the pains inside of her you know when i post stuff about biafrans for my facebook page people they ask me say you be Igbo, why you agitate for these people my my issue be say i i, I know they discriminate Igbo, i will say whatever tribe when the person be first of all we are human before we be we come before we begin get tribe we will belong to and they look at the human factor in us i know they look at where the person they come from where the person they go not be that where they look so i used to say a lot of things for and not against the biafrans however people they give me reasons why they feel say nigeria and nigeria are not supposed to allow biafran go well i know they too they talk double into politics that much i was so concerned when i noticed say that they buy those people anyhow like last week or last two weeks enugu and Imo was on fire i post a lot of those videos for my youtube like i tell you now mm, sorry for my facebook like i tell you now not if they post some of those kind of videos for youtube because youtube know they are like fat even facebook said almost won me they won't be almost they won myself last week because that wasn't last week or last week because i posted a lot of those videos when the gory site man it was bad i post rich one's place him eh? i get to drop my phone like drop my laptop and go away from the whole thing because it can't too much because they won't affect my mental health it's bad it's sad to see like people like said that they do clean see they won't buy everybody where they land you know yes the architect agitation are some people now bring them up but innocent people seeing children being mutilated man i use that english seeing children whether they treat like that because of some i don't know i don't know i don't want to talk too much i am not for i am not against my issue is that we are human we should look at the human factor first before we unleash the dragon on people where make una see this video make una watch make una comment make i see wait till una feel when well, are the way i feel now that they feel i don't want to talk too much i want to give me una own idea or una own today to talk about a subject matter that is very close to our hearts that very personal to many of us, very sensitive matter, very painful matter indeed. And yes, some of us have lived with some bitterness and we make no apologies about that. We were a people in war, led into war, not by our own wishes or design, but in self-defense. No apologies, Nigeria, no apologies to the world. But here we are. I'm sorry, I'm going to stand up, if you don't mind. Um, my name is Onye Kongwenu, and it's not the Onye Kongwenu that you think you know, that you read about in the papers, but the Onye Kongwenu that was born and raised in Port Harcourt. That's correct. And the person who made that statement knows when he says DK when he's telling you where this person came from. My father was the first Arundizog man in the federal house, and he was representing a Port Harcourt constituency. He was the principal of Enitonia High School. He was a brilliant man, but he died too early. Thank you. That's my background. I'm also from Abia State. Since I am Adamazi, I'm Mwaro. I'm from Imo State, Arondizoga, and I'm from Anambra, where my mother comes from. I can go there and live. I can do anything I want in Anambra. Nobody can say anything to me. I'm also from Lagos State. Ah, surprise, surprise. Yeah, I'm from Lagos State. I married a Yoruba man. I have two Yoruba children. They only paid 5,000 Naira as bride price. So we have a right to demand more money anytime. <laughs> Five minutes going. Yes, 50 years after I fought the war. As a young girl, 14, 15, 16, 17, I was in that war. And I lost many relatives. I worked in hospitals. 
I carried babies who died in my arms. I treated old people who took days to die. People were dying out of hunger. Even our soldiers were dying out of hunger at a particular point. But thank God we survived. You see, when my father died at 40, he was a politician and also a principal, but he didn't have much money. In those days, you had to keep your day job, even if you were a member of the House of Representatives. Yes, my mother, an Anambra woman, was a trader. Put your hands together for Anambra women. She was richer than my dad, so my dad would borrow money from her to buy the land, and, and he never paid back. You know how it is. And my mother dares not raise the subject again. At the end of the war, I could not go back to Port Harcourt. My home was abandoned property. Those of you who come from Port Harcourt know the story. A home that a widow, my father had just laid the foundation when he died in a motor car accident, on duty. A building that a widow, and living just adjacent to us, the Ecopus on Hospital Road, we could see you, we could relate. In fact, I thought we were related because every family in Port Harcourt was together. You didn't care where they came from or who they were once you're from Port Harcourt. Every parent had the right to reprimand another child that you saw misbehaving. It was a beautiful town, but we couldn't get back to it. So for me, the Civil War never ended. At the end of that war, my father, oh no, it never ended. It's still going on. I had no family house. My poor mother went back to claim the property she was beating into a coma by people whom she had helped all her life and sent to school because she's an evil woman and now Port Harcourt belonged to another group of people. They forgot the sacrifices that the evils made. It's still going on. No apology has ever been made about that. The road that is now referred to Harold Wilson Drive used to be D.K. Owenu Road because of the sacrifice that people like the Owenus, the Ikopus, the what you know them, the sacrifices they made in, in building up Port Harcourt. Here I am. So I traveled outside, thanks to my sister who was at Harvard at the time, who organized for the rest of us to come and go to school. But we all came back to do what? To develop Nigeria. I have tried, with the little talent that God has given me, to use it for the betterment of my society and my country. But can I tell you something? That if I were a Yoruba or Hausa woman, I would probably have had more patronage, I would have had more help and more support than I have got by my self-help effort to raise this country up. But I'm not asking anybody for anything. I put myself through school my widowed mother did her best, but I was working two jobs in America to put myself through school. I didn't want to take Nigerian scholarship because they were giving it to everybody, those who deserved it and those who didn't. And many of them were not even in school. I put myself through school. Wellesley College and the New School for Social Research. I have no apologies to make to anybody. I am angry. I am angry at Nigeria. I'm angry at this government which seems to be letting us down. I'm angry at us as a people. I'm angry at my people in Dibo. Because only Juada Jomwe. If they have refused you, why are you refusing yourself? Stop complaining and do it for yourself. We've always been able to do that. How did we build Imo Airport? Nobody built it. We spent how many years raising money? I know it was my equipment that was traveling all over the country for concerts. I gave free concerts to build Imo Airport. That's who we have been. And I remember in those eight days, Epurana, Imo State Union, Purana, ZCOB, DK Wanafa, Oputa, Ikoku, you name them, Alba Corana, that's it. No dispute. Everybody follows the line and gets done what needs to be done. Let me tell you about Ndibo. Ndibo are wonderful people. Let me tell you about Ndibo. Ndibo are resilient. Let me tell you about Ndibo. Ndibo are people with integrity, with conscience, with a feeling of humanity that they can reach out wherever they are 
and contribute something to that society and not care that they're not even from there. That's who we are. Do not categorize us as people who are uncles. We don't know. We don't have unity amongst ourselves. You're kidding yourself. We love ourselves. But we also love our neighbors. You see, to love your neighbor, you have got to love yourself. That's what the good book says. Love your neighbor as yourself. So how are you going to love your neighbor if you don't know anything about self-love? I am a proud Igbo woman. I'm going there. If there's anything you know about me as I walk into a place, know that. That there's nothing you can do to me in this country to bow my head. I will not do it. I am my father's daughter. I am my mother's daughter. As an Igbo person, I stand before you committed to the project called Nigeria. But at the same time, you talk about never again. <laughs> uh, with what is happening now, never again? I don't know. But I will soon take my seat. Let me say to the rest of Nigeria, you insult us, and sometimes we do the insulting as well, and that's terrible. We've come to a stage where we have to be insulting each other so badly. But go ahead. We will not succumb. We will not bow. We are children of God. We are here for a purpose. God has put us on this good earth for that purpose. You cannot drive us to the sea. You cannot tell us to shut up and take the pain that you are inflicting on us, abuse us on top of it. Listen, if you don't want us, then let us go. Thank you. Thank you. So, I hope you've seen it. Let me hear from the comment section. What do you think? What is your own opinion? What is your input? I want to hear from you. I want to know more about this thing. When they fight Biafra fight, they never bomb me that time. So I don't really know more about them. He never say I don't hear Biafra or Juku and everything since, but he never say when I begin get interest for the thing. Like what did they happen? Why? That they hold these people like what they happen why things they be like this like why federal government don't want to hear anything about these people now recently now they double into the thing to know more about her i beg me could enlighten me more for the comment section thank you we'll not watch this video we could enjoy